Hello everyone and welcome to QuickMed where medicine is explained quickly and easily. In this video, we will be discussing ear anatomy, which is crucial to understand prior to discussing any infections that can affect the ear. We'll start by discussing some basic anatomy as well as landmarks to look out for when using the otoscope. So let's get to it. All right, so let's start with the outer ear, which begins with the pinna, which is what we can see externally when we're looking at someone, as well as the auditory canal, and then it ends at the eardrum, also known as a tympanic membrane. We then reach our middle ear, which consists of our three ossicles, your malleus, your incus, your stapes, and I like to remember this as mis or mis. And these three ossicles are what send movement of the tympanic membrane to the inner ear, which is our third and final component of ear anatomy. Our inner ear actually has two main parts, the cochlea, which is responsible for our sense of hearing, and then we also have three semicircular canals that are responsible for our sense of balance. Okay, so now we've discussed our outer ear, our middle ear, as well as our inner ear, and now let's take a closer look at our three auditory ossicles. And just a fun fact, our smallest bone of the body is actually your stapes, which is one of your ossicles. When it comes to our three auditory ossicles, just keep in mind which is closest to the tympanic membrane, which is going to be your malleus, because it's actually a landmark we're going to look out for when we're looking at the eardrum, and then our stapes is actually closest to our cochlea. Now that we've covered some basic anatomy, let's talk about what we're going to find when we look at somebody's eardrum. So as the black arrow in this photo depicts, we're going to place the otoscope inside the ear, and then we're going to see something that looks a little bit like this. So when we first look at any eardrum, we need to identify some important landmarks. First, you might notice that there is this bony projection that you can see, and that's actually the malleus that we've been talking about. The malleus actually points upwards and towards the face, so that can help guide you in terms of figuring out which eardrum we're looking at. So in this photo, we're actually looking at somebody's right ear or their right eardrum. And when you use the otoscope, you do shine some light towards the eardrum, and so we do get this reflection or this cone of light. And it's typically in the 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock position when we're looking at the right ear. And then if we're looking at the left ear, just think of it as like an inverse of this image. It's usually in the 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock position. And so these are what you should see when you're looking at a normal tympanic membrane. And also just keep in mind that the tympanic membrane is also a pearly gray color when it is normal. Anytime you see a variation of that, you must consider some other etiology or pathology that might be going on. Our tympanic membrane can be divided into four different quadrants, so let's start by drawing a line straight through the malleus, and this will separate our eardrum into the anterior or the front and the posterior or back regions. Now if we draw a line perpendicular to this previous line right in the middle of the eardrum, we then get our four quadrants. And being able to conceptualize or identify these four different quadrants can be useful when examining a patient. For example, the posterior superior quadrant is often considered the looser portion of the tympanic membrane when compared with the other quadrants. And given this, it's often the area where you'll first see signs of bulging when there is middle ear pressure due to something like acute otitis media. And now that we've covered some basic ear anatomy, let's test your knowledge. In this photo here, are we looking at somebody's right or left ear? Take some time to think about this and the answer will be linked down in the video description below. We hope you found this video helpful. Look out for a future video in the next couple of days where we discuss infections of the ear. If you found this helpful, please make sure to like and subscribe. And as always, good luck studying everyone.